Well, hello everyone, it is Zach Fairchild, Associate Director of Parent and Family Programs at the University of Washington with your Husky Huddle Up podcast season three. And I am so excited and, and a little sad. I don't have my co-host with me typically for this season, Emily Colby. Uh, she is out today, but I am joined by the infamous, as you all should know by now, Director of Parent and Family Programs, Jenna Morris. Jenna, how are you today? Boo, 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 boo. Hello. Uh oh. They let me back in the boost, y'all. Ha <laughs> ha. It's a uh, director of parent and family programs, uh, Zach's partner in crime, Emily's homie. Uh, she, her pronouns. Hello, everybody. I wanted to jump in on the transportation one, especially since I'm from Los Angeles. I am a marvel uh, with the public transportation offering here in Seattle. So, so excited to be here. Zach, who do we have? I am so excited as well because I'm a newbie to Seattle and uh, just even sleuthing the website before this was super helpful because it reminded me of things I had already forgotten since starting here at the EW. Um, but I am so excited. We are joined by Ann Etheridge, our Director of Transportation Services for the University of Washington. Welcome, Ann. How are you today? I'm great. It is wonderful to be with you and among you today. We are so excited to have you, especially if you all don't know, we are recording on a Friday. So, Anne, thank you so much for bearing with us Oh, glad to be here. <laughs> and welcome to our podcast. <laughs> so, I, again, like I shared, I am newer to the UW campus. How long have you been at the University of Washington, Anne? Almost to today, meaning almost my anniversary day, is 24 years to the day. Hey, oh, hey, my gosh. Okay, this was a good time, everybody. Happy anniversary, Woo! Anne. <laughs> Happy anniversary, and that's a grad student that's taken a little longer than usual. Maybe a super, super senior at UW. What's, oh, 24. 24 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know, I know. Call me great, call me crazy. It, yeah, it depends. <laughs> I'll go for the first. I'm going with great. So in those 24 years, does that mean you, is Seattle your hometown? Did you come, did you go to school here? What? Tell us, tell us how you've become this wonderful human being. <laughs> <laughs> well, with actually lots of shaping and care in terms of I've spent uh, most of my career, which uh, spans almost 40 years, in higher education. And that is how much I value higher education. Um, so I have an undergraduate degree in theology and psychology and a master's degree in student personnel in higher education, meaning um, a joint degree from my program in terms of student affairs, both in counseling and student development. So um, I have kind of a threefold background in both um, higher education administration and dealing with student affairs programs, four years in banking, and then came back into higher education after four years in banking in business affairs. So I love the mission and purpose of higher education, and I'm grateful to be able to talk to the families and students that are joining us because I believe higher education changes lots. Oh my gosh, Ann. So here, here I was thinking she's going to tell me that she's been in Washington, the U.S. Department of <laughs> Washington, Department of Transportation. She's like an avid person, like loves aviation, things like <laughs> loves trains, building cars. Oh no, here at UW, the director of our UW Transportation Services is a student life uh, professional. That is correct. A bank, a banking professional. I heard counseling in there. That's right. And if there, if there is a place that can take uh, all of those superpowers and use it into one. It is this particular department. How uniquely suited you are for doing all of these yes. wonderful well, things. Well, I believe what we do with students on campus in terms of the higher ed experience is what changes the world. And so to be a part of providing services um, to our students and our families is what we're here for. That, that's who's paying my paycheck. That's who's paying the bills. And so um, student-centric and faculty-centric in terms of what we do at the University of Washington is so critical. So to the, all those families out there, congratulations. All those students, congratulations for getting to this point to join this wonderful university community. Yeah, 
And I would love to just invite, as you've done a really great job of framing, do you get a sense that this, how you've shaped the transportation services, we're going to start talking about program and things, how is it different here, unique here, or similar to maybe our soon to be Pac-12, soon to be Big Ten, I just had to throw it in there, you know, like, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry people. Uh, colleagues, uh, or just, you know, our, our, our higher ed landscape, you're so uniquely suited to do this because you've gone through all of these wonderful things and probably have a lot of experience. So how is UW transportation the same, different, or unique here at UW? Well, one way we are very unique has to do with uh, the service that students probably will use every day. And if they don't use it every day, they will certainly use it um, um, consistently without, throughout their time at the University of Washington, and that is our UPASS program. Our UPASS is nationally and internationally award-winning. And what's a UPASS? It is your ticket to get anywhere in our global Puget Sound region. The UPASS program was started by students, and the UPASS program to this day, in terms of its history, um, is one of the daily unique wonderful tools that our campus uh, uses and our students use relative to getting around in terms of um, their transit needs whether it's going to an internship whether it's going to buy groceries whether it's going to uh, Barbie and seeing the next uh, cool movie that's out there um, whether it's going to a Mariners game or a Seahawks game or just uh, uh, going to get a cup of coffee, um, the UPASS is this wonderful tool that the University of Washington has that universities all over the country have modeled in terms of students being able to have a transit benefit. That's part of what they pay for in their tuition package along with their student activity fee along with their tuition. And with 100,000 people coming to campus every day, of which 30 to 40,000 of those are students, um, that's how you get around, is by using your UPASS. And there are, people's lives are shaped by using their UPASS because many times our students tell us when they leave the university and you will graduate, even if you're brand new, you will graduate, is that um, the UPASS made them choose their housing differently or whether or not they actually purchase a vehicle or where they might live. So it's a, it's a wonderful benefit that students have. And don't be afraid of the buses. Don't be afraid of light rail. Get up, get out, and use that UPASS. Oh, my gosh, Anne. I'm ready. All right. I also love it. Um, what year, if you can remember, like if UPASS was started by students, um, I'd love to know how old the UPASS is. Um, I wish I had sense. that up on the top of my head, but it's oh. over 25 years old. So I think All right. Well, you just got there. You know, okay, how long? It was before, <laughs> it was before I came to the university. Um, so I think it's, it's 25, 28 years-ish old. Um, and it is um, both nationally and world-renowned. Lovely. And I, I have to say... Um, I love using my UPASS to go to the airport. Absolutely. <laughs> you very Absolutely. I don't need to do like, and that means everybody, like your student can go and take, they can go home. There is really no excuse. Right, yes, right at our, right at our U District station, right at our stadium station, um, roll on your suitcase and roll to the airport. Yeah. Well, um, Zach, uh, is there, you've used your UPASS, haven't you? I mean, I love it. It's so great. Like, it is very much very grocery friendly. Um, lots of, I, I also went to go see Barbie. I also went to go see Oppenheimer with said UPASS. It's been a really, yes. Excellent. It's been a wonderful, wonderful thing to use um, as a staff member. But Zach is pretty new, so I'm wondering if he started using it. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, my husband and I live in uh, North Seattle, and so we go to uh, down to, well, I'm going to get the areas wrong, everybody, uh, Queen Anne District, you, uh, down by Lumen Field and all that area. Um, we go there quite a bit. Our, our bestie lives down there, and so we've utilized that um, quite often. 
Um, oftentimes it's faster than driving, <laughs> depending on the time of day, which is super helpful. No parking. No parking. And also I just have to carry my little Husky Pass with me because it's loaded right in there. I just do that little thing. I don't have to pay. Everyone's jealous. I look super fancy. <laughs> Uh, so I've, I've loved it. That's great. And what you need to know is you're getting your environmentalist points as well in terms of green transportation. You're not, uh, you're jumping on mass transit instead of using a single occupancy vehicle. So you get green points as well as purple points for using that. So you're doing it the dog way and you're also helping the environment. Oh, yeah. And thank you. I just made a that just made our our gloomy Friday a little happier. There you go. Well, I know. I don't think I could have summed that up any better. Make the plan. <laughs> yeah. You make yeah. it helps your pocketbook and it helps the planet. Excellent. Well, um, I'd love to talk a little bit about the people of uh, UW Transportation. Um, it seems like by the time you got there, the U Pass was kind of in its infancy. And as how many folks? Um, are working at the uh, UW Transportation and, you know, let us know, tell us whether or not it's grown, stayed the same, or a little different since uh, you started. So I've been in this role for seven years, um, and so I'm so glad um, to be able to provide um, that kind of service to the University of Washington. Um, our department is comprised of parking services. Then we have, um, you know, so those are our places and spaces where visitors, faculty, staff, students can park. Uh, a par as part of parking, a, a lot of folks may not know, we have over 170 key events during the year, starting with uh, convocation all the way to commencement and all kinds of exciting things in between. We do events um, and sometimes they've included uh, the Queen of England visiting or the Dalai Lama or President Obama um, or other folks in terms that come and, and share with our university community. So a lot of folks think about parking, but we also do an enormous amount of events, like I said, from convocation to commencement and everything in between. We also have our Commute Options Department, which is the home of our UPASS. It's also the home of our, bar our biking and pedestrian programs in terms of bike lockers and bike houses. So if you bike around campus, which we encourage, um, we've got great lockers and bike houses that you can keep your bike in. I also oversee our fleet services, which provides vehicles in our UCAR program and UW shuttles, our shuttles um, service all of our medical facilities and also we have our access transportation program for folks mobility impaired that is called Dial-A-Ride and then it's important I think for students and parents to know about our night ride program it's a very uh, important program um, many times our um, transit partners do not have a lot of routes and availability and accessibility at night and so if our students need to get around at night and feel safe relative to their transportation options, a uh, part of our shuttles program is our night ride program and that steps in where our transit partners don't always provide the kind of service needed within our greater um, uh, community associated with our routes in and around um, the university and our fraternity and sorority areas as well in our uh, residence hall facilities. And then um, uh, that, that uh, pretty much sums up things other than our business unit inside transportation. Um, so uh, big shoulders relative to our UPASS programs, our parking facilities and events, our bike and pedestrian issues, 700 uh, vehicles in our fleet, um, along with our UCAR program that many people use for internships and programs and then our shuttle programs which include night ride. I wanted to ask a little bit because I, I there's some few things that I wanted to make sure our families heard again. Night ride is a big discussion when we have our family orientation uh, not just from uh, campus and community safety obviously our UW PD is such a great footprint and thank you for mentioning that it does go to the Greek side <laughs> campus that's a very big question the yes um the dial a ride 
is that solely for students or can visitors use that as well? That's obviously a little bit different from night ride. And I wanted to just clarify that because families do ask about their own kind of transportation options when they visit. So um, our dial ride is a service for faculty, staff, and students. So if family need access-based transportation, they should connect in with our transit partners, King County Metro, and ask for an access ride. So if folks need help, um, that is what our transit partners provide. Um, but for students, faculty, and staff, so let's say someone is permanently mobility impaired, that's a service they use every day. But what parents need to know is if someone has a skiing accident, if uh, someone um, uh, breaks an ankle, um, if someone has something that uh, impacts their, has surgery um, and needs to have access transportation, it is not just for folks that have permanent mobility impairments. It's there to help anyone that might have something um, that they're dealing with at a period in time and they need a better way to get to class or to their um, building as a faculty or administrator. What a great thing to remember i'm going to make sure we have that zach we're going to definitely make, put that in one of the resource links after our podcast we always add a link to really great things that's definitely something that i think gives a little bit you can already get a sense of of pause and calm and helpfulness that i think maybe students couldn't quite don't quite know about until something happens so it's nice to let students and families know that this is available to them. Access Ride, I love Access Ride because uh, I see all the fabulous grandma and grandpas around the neighborhood <laughs> using Access Ride. That, that's my, I was like, I'm gonna get what that is. It's also similar to like when dog sled, you know, and when there's yes, like a football game. Yes, it's very similar to the dog sled in our uh, intercollegiate athletics um, getting people to their seats. So access transportation, if folks need that in our, our, our greater Puget Sound community to be able to get that, then folks off campus use access. Yes. And then the last one is that I heard you say students use the U cards or some uh, to go to their internships and would love a little bit more expansion in that one because I feel like that was even new to me. So um, people use our UCAR fleet um, for field trips, um, for program reasons, for uh, other reasons. Now it has to, they have to be able to charge it to a department budget. So I don't want to lead you astray. Um, I, would, I would direct you to our fleet services site and who can and when it can be utilized. But let's say a resident assistant wants to take a group of people somewhere for a program. There's a budget number that RA can, can utilize and people can go and do. Maybe they want to go to the Asian Art Museum um, associated with SAM um, and, the Wing, and the Wing Loop Museum. So let's say they wanted to do that for a program. Then an RA could get what's called a U-car and take everyone there in a van or um, a sedan and go to Wing Luke Museum and have an amazing time and maybe have a picnic on the ground. Oh my gosh, that's such a great, first of all, good shout out to Wing Luke. <laughs> oh, it's an amazing museum. I was going to say, these are great places being named, everybody. Like, keep these places written down. These are, and you're name dropping. <laughs> I know. Also, you know, stay stay around for the food, you know, inter, International District. is amazing, amazing. Yeah, dim sum is my middle name. I want, I want some and then oh dim sum. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Follow up meeting to be scheduled. That's right. That's right. There is the, you know, Seattle is, is one of our food capitals of the country. Um, you can eat internationally in Seattle, our International District um what what you can find there alone is uh, a wonderful adventure so um, um if you aren't uh, getting out uh, uh of that residence hall or apartment or or fraternity sorority you're living in you're you're losing out because uh seattle is a world-class city oh my god use that you pass use that you pass <laughs> 
Can I tell you, I just, we went to go to Musang, and I know you've been there. Oh. I haven't. Oh, my. I'm writing it Listen. down. I'm writing it down. Sorry, everybody. We're going to take a Filipino restaurant break. This is Jana Marsh. Jana Dak and I Marsh. And Anne feels like a foodie, and I feel like we need to get her on this. The Beacon Hill stop is very less than five minutes right. walk to Musang. Ooh. Filipino American restaurant by UW alumna chef Melissa, who I am still trying to be friends with. Every time I go there, I'm like, "Hey, girl, how's it going?" You know. But and if you can, we expand the uh, the Pan Asia uh, yeah, experience. <laughs> experience. Please go there. You can take take the UW transportation team to Musang. It is a very family style food eating. Oh my gosh. We thought we were just going to talk about the U Pass people and the buses. We are now talking about food. <laughs> we're talking about uh, helping during during times of short term or permanent like um, accessibility and mobility, mobility right. issues. Right. Oh my gosh! We even have the fact that the U Pass was a student led initiative program. Initiative, and I did not know that you guys were counting like a hundred thousand people show up on uh, on campus in a day. Oh my God, a day! Well, you have okay. to consider. You have to consider that this institution has um, a Puget Sound regional hospital in terms of the quality of our UW medicine oh, facilities. So, in addition to our faculty, staff, and students, and of course our 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 residents and our medical professionals are here to serve the greater Puget Sound community. We have a business school, we have a law school, um, and so our cohort of students and the faculty staff that serves them, um, that's a big order every day to bring people here and make it happen from the custodian that keeps our facilities clean to the folks that prepare our food to our faculty and staff who make it happen. Um, it takes big shoulders to make a world-class university work every day. That's so great. Well, what a, like, it's just an arterial vein <laughs> for, the, for the whole campus. Um, well, since we do have first-year families and sec probably some returning second-year, third-year, soon-to-be senior families, when do you actually see, uh, first of all, where is the UW transportation team housed? And do you get to see a lot of students? come through your doorway, so to speak? Um, so we're housed on Campus Parkway, um, which is at apropos. It's right near um, uh, the Student Affairs Building in Smith's Hall. Um, we're on the uh, corner of Campus Parkway and University Way. And we're easy to find. It's where a lot of our buses actually stage and take folks um, downtown as we were talking earlier about jobs and internships. Um, so it is a part of our transportation artery right where we sit. Um, we sit in the, nested in with also uh, many residence halls, Alder and um, uh, other, other uh, Terry Lander that's around us. And so easy to access. In terms of our interactions with students, because a lot of our services can be garnered online um, we don't have a huge day-to-day um, -day face time with students. This Husky Card office, we certainly collaborate with, but that is a, a housing and food service operation that we are big stakeholders in. Um, so we only have actually a family, I think it's important, and students here out there, only about 3% of students actually um, need a parking space. And we think we're very proud of our students for that, with that. We know some folks do drive and incidentally use um, parking. Our value parking is found um, by students in our East Campus lots near our stadium. So if you need to pinch your pennies, that's a great place to pinch your pennies for value-based parking in our East Campus lots near Husky Stadium and then walk into campus on Montlake. Um, and you'll be surprised, but um, we hire students um, in our transportation. I talked about those 170 plus events we do. So we've got students right now, this weekend, preparing and working with us for the very first home Husky football game. 
So go dogs! And so um, I'm shouting out saying we have student opportunities associated with them. Employment, employment with transportation services and we have meaningful relationships. We did a, an article recently in our annual report and it showed how many of our permanent employees actually were Huskies and, and loved working with us so much they became full-time permanent employees with transportation services. So you might not ever think you'd have a career in, in uh, transportation services, but once you work with us, you find it's a wonderful place to work. Oh, you got to love that. That's a great plug for a student. Can't, like That is a great student job. It I is think, actually. Because, a, the students yeah. love working for us, and they love attending the different events, and they usually love meeting other students. Um, that they might not have met in their residence halls or classes. So it's a great, great place to work. I was going to share some information because, uh, you know, in preparation for this meeting and all, I was looking on the website and I will say if you haven't been yet and you have any questions around transportation, um, you guys also have walking maps, information about getting around campus, the vehicle rentals, uh, link to the access guide, uh, which we did have a great conversation earlier in the season with Bree over at um, you'd have accessibility, um, and it sounds like you all work together just just smashingly. But I want to call out the website transportation.uw.edu. Um, you have yeah no absolutely you have great information all the time on there. You have a what's new section. Um, yesterday's post, of course, being Husky football game day parking information for everyone that needs to know, um, and then you have the parking impacts, which I pay very close attention to, especially if I do need to drive to the office or around town, I always look at the transportation.uw.edu parking impacts and because there's sometimes events that I'm missing that you all always have listed, um, which is super helpful to know, um, especially if you're trying to get to campus. And then I just wanna share these fast facts and this is where I cut Jan off because this was amazing to me. Almost 40% everybody, so 39.4% of our UW community comes to campus via transit. 28% walk, 8% bike, and five use carpool or vanpool. Only 18.9% drive alone to campus. And guess what? That statistic, new information, only 13, we got an update, only 13% of our campus drives to campus in a single occupancy vehicle. Why is that? That is the positive impact, unintended consequence of the global pandemic because we now do more tele uh, education and telework we are now down to 13 percent single occupancy vehicle there's only one institution in the nation that is lower than 13 percent and you get extra brownie points if you guess the one campus in the country that has a lower drive alone rate than the University of Washington. I'm going to say somewhere in New York, maybe in New York. New York. I was going to say NYU. She's close. So, oh, you both are close. You're in New York. Oh. Oh, um. It's not NYU. NYU. Columbia. Oh, I heard it. Columbia. Columbia. Columbia University. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, Jana got it. <laughs> Sorry, oh. sister-in-law went to Columbia Cornell, baby, baby. And the only reason that Columbia is better than we are is because of subways. So uh, our link light rail stations um, and, and service is catching up with that. But that says an enormous amount about the commitment and use of uh, the UPASS by our community and, and, and uh, environmental choices by using mass transit. We are only the second university in the nation um, to have that low drive alone rate. Isn't that wonderful? And our students contribute enormously to that in terms of biking and walking and the use of mass transit. So hooray. That is incredible. It is amazing to hear. And I told Emily this and she's told me this all throughout the season is um, uh, being a little newer to campus, it is so incredible not just to meet you all throughout this season, but to really hear where you're coming from and all the resources and kind of the ins and outs of your program. And it just makes us feel so, so much more invested in the work that we're doing when we, we get to know our colleagues this way and the folks, uh, you know, and their mission and purpose behind the scenes. And Anne, thank you so much for sharing that with us today because my heart is full. I also have a list of 
cool places to go, a new Filipino restaurant. Thank you, Jana. Um, all sorts of things and takeaways from today's session. But um, folks, if you didn't write it down, transportation.udub.edu. That's going to be your best first resource, I would say. Go there first. Plan ahead. Use the tools. Ask questions. Uh, Anne and their team are definitely here for you. Um, but Anne, Jana, is there anything else that you all want to talk about or make sure our first, second year, third year senior families know about before we part with them today? Yeah, I, uh, our, I can't help but ask um, for our families with commuters. That's the, my one thing, because that can kind of be our first year to seniors. Um, sometimes they feel like they don't think that they're going to get that UW Husky on campus residence hall or, camp, or apartment nearby campus. Um, experience and I was wondering and I feel like you're uniquely suited to talk about this like your students that work at UW transportation they must get some questions or figure out how to build that community um, was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about that um, and I think that'll make sure we round it out <laughs> how, how our families can kind of um, think about transportation as a community building Yes, I think that um, because of how UW is very much what I would call a hybrid campus, and I'm not talking hybrid in terms of how we think of it in terms of work environments or school environments, the University of Washington has always been unique in terms of the fact that we have a large residential cohort that certainly lives on campus, but we have an even larger commuter campus. And this commuter campus, I think that Jana's uh, alluding to a little bit of folks that don't may not live directly on campus, is still incredibly vital and connected. And one of the ways that happens, and I'm going to shout it to the, you know, kind of the heavens, is our hub, our Husky Union building, is really a key community point for campus and in our Husky Union building are all of our clubs and organizations um, that are uh, institutionally sponsored and that people get connected into. And people feel like the hub and other spaces and places that are common areas in our administrative building, I'll point out another place like our Hans Rosling building, uh, our Earth Sciences building, that go, the list goes on and on, that we have these great spaces for our commuter students to, even if they don't live in campus, they can connect, learn, be in labs, conference rooms, common spaces, um, and feel like they're very much a part of the Husky community without having a, a residence hall bed. Our folks that are connected in, in our residence halls have some built-in programs and services associated with that, but your Husky card gets you into all of our dining facilities. Um, we have a great Husky Union building with our clubs and organizations that people can get tied into. And there's also our, our rec center. So if you happen to be, you know, um, into our intercollegiate, not our intercollegiate sports, but our recreation sports, um, our athletic facilities down on Mont Lake relative to rec sports um, is a wonderful place also to get connected in different ways. So don't think you're missing out because you're not in our residence halls. We are a unique commuter campus and residential campus. Um, and I think it makes for a much more dynamic community to have both kinds of um students and commuting going on it's so great thank you so much Ian. well uh zach i feel like uh this is a really great place to have you know i you. i think our cup runneth over again i mentioned that website also if you're social media folks facebook.com forward slash uw transportation i noticed you also post fun little challenges and things happening across campus. So if your Husky's not following them yet, be sure to, because I see that there are also some prizes sometimes. And we all know that prizes on the campus can be very good. Um, so be sure to follow on social. And besides social and website, is there anywhere else or resources or places that you would recommend our first year or second year families or folks come into campus should go to? 
Um, I would just also list our um, UCommute at uw.edu if folks have idiosyncratic questions um, and unique questions and things that they may have a special need to know. Um, we have a universal email for customer facing for faculty, staff, students, and visitors. Um, you commute at uw.edu and um, if you have um, unique questions where we can help, I'd glad point you there as well. I almost had to chuckle because you commute at uw.edu is very rhymy and sounds really like cute. <laughs> but we will be sure to share that resource as well. Um, and again, thank you so much. If you all don't know, Anne just got back from vacation. So give her an amazing round of applause because you were absolutely fantastic today. Glad to be with thank you. Thank you so much for your service and go dogs. Go dogs. Well, we are lucky to have you. Go dogs. Jana, thank you so much for being my partner in crime today. Emily, of thank course, you. I miss you. I will see you next time. And to all of our parents and families out there listening, thank you for listening to this season of the Husky Huddle Up podcast. And we will see you next year for season four. The Husky Huddle Up podcast series is a collaboration between the University of Washington's first year programs and parent and family programs. To provide parents and families equitable access to information in support of the Husky success. The Husky Huddle Up podcast is produced by me, Chloe Giselle, a recent graduate from the UW who received a Bachelor's of Arts through the Cinema and Media Studies program.